Ganassi Xfinity car. First question for Brennan. Well, Brennan, yeah, had your first uh, Xfinity season under your belt. How do you feel as you head into year two? Well, um, I'm pretty excited about it. Um, I'm kind of, you know, I'm with the same guys. I'm going to have uh, Chad Norris again uh, working with me as a crew chief. I feel like uh, last year we built uh, a lot together and, and uh, started putting some really fast race cars on the track. Our communication was uh, going really well. So um, I'm excited to, to have the opportunity to work with DC Solar and, and uh, work with Chad and, and Chip and everybody again. It, it's really been a, a great process and they've uh, worked with me so I could learn and get better and improve and I uh, really felt like at the end of the year uh, we started to, to be a, a real contender and, and we were fast and, and we're running up front and getting top fives and uh, we were right there and, and I feel like we really would have been a team that uh, was capable of making it to Homestead had we not had the alternator failure at Charlotte. So uh, I feel like um, you know we're a strong team, we have speed uh, and any weekend could be our weekend so we just have to keep working hard. Question? Brandon, I'm over here in the middle. Um, you experimented with a, a couple social media stuff, uh, different apps last year. You did that one, I can't remember the name, where Beam. Be Me. Yeah, Beam. <laughs> um, and then you, you've done some vlogging and stuff. Um, what do you think is next uh, as far as what might catch on? Um, what are you going to play around with um, as far as social media next? So I'm still doing the vlog. Uh, I just put one up last uh, Friday. So I'm going to continue trying to do that. I'm going to try to do that. Like last year, I was trying to do it every week. Um, and I did it for a while up into, until the chase started, and then I kind of just focused on um, the chase and the playoffs and stuff like that. There's just a lot going on, and, and the vlog kind of takes a little bit of time. So I'm trying to do it over a little bit longer period. So if I do get busy and forget to film some things, I still have stuff to put in there to make entertaining. So I'm trying to do it every two Fridays. I'm going to put a, a, a video out on YouTube. So I've been trying to push that channel, so maybe you guys can help me out a little bit, help me get some views on that thing. Um, but yeah, you know, um, I really enjoy the social media uh, a part of it. Um, I, I, you know, Instagram is, I like to post pictures and what I'm doing and uh, family vacations and all that stuff. And, and a lot of that ties into the vlog. Um, you know, Twitter, um, you know, I try to answer everybody's questions, fans, everyone, I try to be involved. Um, you know, I used Beam for a little while, but I haven't been, Beam got bought by CNN. So it's not, uh, it's more like a news-based thing now, I guess, I'm not sure. but. Um, you know, so I haven't been using uh, Beam or any of that anymore. But I, I really think um, YouTube is kind of the future where a lot of stuff is going. So I'm trying to, um, you know, get that going with my with my vlog. Chris, Chris Knight, Catchfans.com. Brendan, you're the first Xfinity driver we can talk to. So how do you feel about the new format for 2017? Uh, well, that's awesome to be the first one to get to talk about. I just did this at, with Sirius, and they did the same thing. They really, like, hounded me about it, though. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's cool. I think it gives a, an opportunity to a lot of drivers like myself to uh, gain some bonus points. Um, you know, you, you win one of those stages. You get that uh, point stays with you uh, through the chase, so you could kind of get yourself a, a little bit more of a cushion when the playoffs start. So, you know, I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, I think it's great that uh, the way they're doing it, where they're just kind of throwing a caution. Um, you know, I think for me, one of the things I was concerned about is that it would just be a break and we would stop, more like kind of how we did the other, uh, the, the uh, Dash for Cash races. So I'm kind of, uh, I'm really excited about how the format and all the stuff that they've done. I think it's going to be really great, really entertaining. I think it's going to change strategy. I think the crew chiefs are going to have some headaches <laughs> in the beginning, um, you know, because uh, what's going to happen if a caution comes out in the middle of their, uh, of the middle of one of these uh, stages. So um, I think it's going to be exciting and, and I'm fun to, to, I'm looking forward to being a part of it and trying to win some of these stages and gain some, some bonus points. Question. Yeah, Tyler Burnett, Motor Racing Network. Um, the other day we talked about how there might be a little bit of a lingering after effect from the Talladega race that you nearly won. You're going back to a restrictor plate race in Daytona right off the bat. Your thoughts and um, can you touch a little bit on your restrictor plate racing last year? Well, I feel like, uh, you know, my cars at the restrictor plate race w races last year were really good. We were really competitive um, at Daytona. You know, we were running in inside the top five and we had a battery issue um, there similar to Charlotte, which knocked us out of the race. And then, of course, Talladega, uh, we were super fast and led laps and, and were up front battling with those guys and crossed the finish line first. So um, I feel like, um, you know, that's somewhere that I've been pretty strong. 
um, and our race cars have been strong. So just trying to go there and and uh, make the most uh, of the opportunity we're going to have, stay out of trouble, um, you know, try to get up front and lead laps and um, just make the most of it. Of course, winning at Daytona is something you dream about as a kid your whole life. Um, you know, just having the opportunity to race there is, is a privilege. So, uh, you know, I'm excited about it. We've had speed, and I really feel like, um, you know, we're, we're a team that can certainly win uh, at the restricted plate races this coming year. What's it like having McMurray and Larson to lean on and gather data with? Yeah, McMurray is really good at the plate races. So uh, he's helped me a lot, taught me a lot of things. Um, you know, just getting to spend some time with him. Uh, he's also an excellent goal kart racer. I did, I did a, we did like a two-hour enduro race with our whole race shop, and he's, he's good. He's fast. He taught me some stuff on a goal kart too. But, um, you know, Kyle and I get along really good. We're closer, closer in age, um, you know, so we've been, um, you know, spending a little bit more time uh, with each other. And, and, of course, I've been able to work with him more on the Xfinity side since he's actually racing Xfinity races. Um, and so it's been really easy to, to work with him and bounce ideas off of uh, each other and try to make our race cars better. So um, both of those guys are extremely talented and very smart and work really hard at what they're trying to do. So it's been really fun working with them. Question? Stan. Stan Creekmore with Outside the Box. Sorry. Um, so you're three or four laps from the caution. You're hanging right on the back of like a third place car. You're the fourth place car. It, but it's been 70 laps. You, you've worn your tires out and everything. Do you, do you hold back or do you just go for it anyway for that extra point? Well, uh, if you can get it, you get it, you know? <laughs> um, you know, we're all driving these cars as hard as we can every lap, you know? Uh, if you're not running as hard as you can, the next guy is and he gets you. Um, so, uh, you know, all these guys are the best in the world, and they, they don't let you slack at all. So, um, you know, everyone in those late moments where the tires are worn out and you're battling the guy in front of you and you're doing everything that you can to get around him, um, he's doing everything he can to keep you behind him. So it makes it extremely tough, and um, it, it makes it really hard um, to pass and move forward and do those things because we're all racing so hard for everything. Um, so for me, in those situations, I'm doing everything that I can to get by him uh, up until, you know, the end of the race or a caution comes out or whatever. You're laying everything out that you can to get it done. You talked about the video blog and wanting to get uh, more people to look at it. you got a NASCAR.com audience out there, and you talked about this uh, two-hour go-kart marathon. Uh, do you have any of that? What episode should we tune into? Oh, you man, know, help I, us uh, get up to speed. I don't have the go-kart racing on the blog. I didn't film it. So... I, um, I started, I would say, um, you know, the beginning of this month, I started it up for 2017, and I captured um, some of my trip. I went to New Jersey um, and had my second Christmas with um, my girlfriend Lindsay's family um, and spent some time up there. I went to New York, um, saw, uh, saw a Broadway musical, which was a little bit out of my character, but uh, it was fun. And, um, you know, so I captured all that stuff and, and a little bit behind the scenes, you know, I'm capturing stuff here today that I've been doing. Um, and, and, you know, it's just kind of to give the fans that little bit of inside uh, behind the scenes look and, and to kind of get to know me a little bit better. You know, um, I'm still just a, you know, a kid who's working hard for his dreams. And, um, you know, so I kind of show, um, you know, where I'm putting that work in at. And then also when I'm also kind of goofy and silly, like the last video, I encourage you guys to go watch it. Um, you know, we made, uh, I like Bob's Burgers. I don't know if any of you guys have seen that cartoon show, but uh, we ha uh, Lindsay got me a cookbook, um, and it's a, it's a Bob's Burgers cook cookbook, and it has every burger that's pinned on the show. So we made the uh, Don't You Four Cheddar About Me burger. And uh, it's, so it has like four different cheeses on stuff. And so we cooked the burger and had some friends over and stuff, and all that's in the vlog too. So I try to just show a little bit of, um, you know, who I am as a person and, and, and also uh, the journey that I'm on to, to make it um, to the cup level and, and uh, be a champion. So I'm putting it all in there. Well, thanks for uh, stopping on your journey enough to uh, chat with us. And uh, Brendan Poole, driver of the uh, Ganassi Xfinity team car. We will have Landon Castle coming out in just a moment or so. We have. We have. Nice to see you. That's a uh, Am I on time? bright uniform. You're, you're within a club length. You're good. First question for, uh, there we go, Don. Landon, early in your career, I had the opportunity to interview, at the Jenner, interview you at the Jennerstown Speedway, and I said, 
What does the future hold for Landon Castle? I don't know if you remember, but you said... I'm scared to hear what I said. I want to be in Cup. There you go. It's been a long journey. In that journey, what was the biggest challenge that you had to face? Um, probably, probably discipline. Like learning, you know, learning how to be a real professional race car driver. Um, that's, that's, that's the biggest challenge. Uh, when, you know, when, when we spoke, I was probably 15 or 16, and I was in high school, so I had high school responsibilities. And, uh, I mean, working on a race car was something fun to do. I, I did it. You know, I used, to, I used to get up before school to work on my car, and, and then I'd go to school, and then I'd go to the shop after school, and I would work on my race car till 11 or 12 o'clock at night or whatever, as long as I wanted. Uh, but when you, <clears throat> when I became a professional race car driver, and then even as kind of life has gone on the last couple of years, I've got a family, I've got a wife, I've got kids, um, kind of having to turn that, that passion and hobby into a job has been a challenge. And, and um, creating, um, I want to say creating, but prioritizing what it takes for me to be a successful race car driver and then implementing that into a real life schedule and then balancing my career with, with my family life. So that's, that's been my biggest challenge. But even as a teenager, the perception was you were going to develop per, per, professionally in right. a very good way. and. You answered the question. It took me a while to ask yeah. you the results. I'm, gl I'm glad you came all the way here to ask me that question. I appreciate it. Um, and honestly, we're one for one so far, so you need to ask me a follow-up question. Like, you know, am I going to be a, cha a champion? The next one is to be a champion or, or a race winner. Um, but, but, yeah, I mean, back then I, I, I didn't have a clue, to be honest with you. I, I, I'm, I just wanted to be a, a NASCAR driver. Stan Creekmore. Stan Creekmore with Outside the Box. Uh, Landon, how do the point changes affect you? What are the challenges you see in, in getting some of those points? Um, I think that, man, I, I think that's just still yet to be determined. And uh, to me, I mean, gosh, that's the, the beauty in it is... Um, I mean, I think this is a big change. I think that the way that our crew chiefs and race engineers strategize a 500-mile race is going to change as we know it. And um, I think you're going to see the field flip multiple times in these races over the course of the year. I mean, I, it, I, I, I would be willing to bet that, that our first impression of this new format in Daytona um, you're going to see a huge group of cars taking a risk and pitting on their own on lap 43 um, and getting off sequence. And I think you're going to see the field off sequence a lot this season. Um, and it's, it's going to be really interesting. And I, and I think you're going to see teams that, uh, uh, like myself, where we're constantly trying to fight our way inside that top 20, I think you're going to see us caught in, in the middle of some of that action over the course of the year. You know, the teams that, that, that have to fight, we're always going to have to fight. You know, we're not magically um, going to be top 10 teams. We have, to, we have to work to get there. We have to work very hard to get to the top 10. Um, but I think you're going to see us in the, in the crossfire of, of this strategy a lot. Jeff. Uh, Landon, whenever you guys, uh, you talked about achieving your goal of getting to the cup level, whenever you are in a situation where it's, uh, you know, tough to run up front or whatever, how hard is that to keep your confidence and maintain that? Um, I mean, it's, it's not, I, I feel like it's, for me, I, I try not to let that become what what drives my my daily or weekly mood or confidence level for me where what I try to allow that dictates my confidence level is 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 my plan and my agenda and my schedule and my goals and knowing that I'm doing everything I can to be the best professional race car driver I can be for my car owner who who you know who hired me to do this job 
uh, my sponsors who essentially hired me to do this job, and, and my family who's relying on me to provide for them. So, um, yeah, I wake up every morning and, and, and have to think about exactly what it is I'm doing um, and, and if it's contributing to, to my goal of being the best race car driver. So that, I, I think as long as I stick to that on a day-in and day-out basis, I've found that that produces the best results of having a con consistent high confidence level, regardless of, of how the car is running or how, how the team is performing or, how, or, or just sheer luck of what's going on at the racetrack. Question. Tyler, we're at Motor Racing Network. Uh, Lance, I'm right here. Sorry, Lance. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> um, when you go to Daytona, you have one of the best teammates. You're talented on restrictor plates. Do you, do you guys have butterflies going there? Know that you have a chance to win, race for top tens, race for top fives at tracks like that? Absolutely, especially with David. I mean, man, I, I'm so excited to race with David. I can't even tell you uh, at super speedways. He, he knows how to push. He knows where to be. Um, I'm excited about my spotter this year. Um, he's uh, he, he spotted for Biffle last year, and, and uh, I think we're gonna we're gonna be a good team. So, you know, it's uh, my car's gonna be bright and yellow at Daytona, and it's gonna look good. And uh, hopefully, I can see you guys for breakfast uh, the day after. Chris Knight, catchfence.com. I'm gonna tweet that today. Oh, boy. Because yeah, yesterday was good. 34 days until mm -hmm. Daytona, so I'm going to, like, tweet that it's 34 days until I see you for breakfast. <laughs> How about that? Kelly Moore. Well, it's 33 days till Daytona, but 34 days until we have breakfast. Yeah, you know. <laughs> right? Serving bacon? It took Jenna an extra second. All right. Chris. <laughs> Got it. Chris. Chris Knight, catchfence.com. Um, you guys had 15 top 25 finishes last season. Pretty good for you guys. You guys were building your, you getting used to the team and whatnot. What can we expect from you guys in 2017? I mean, ho hopefully it's, it's, I mean, and this might sound super modest, but it, it will take hard work. Uh, I mean, hopefully it's 15 top 20 finishes. Um, you know, if, if those 15 top 25s um, can turn into 15 top 20 finishes, then a few of those are going to be top 10s. Um, hopefully we can have some stage top tens as well. Um, and, uh, and I, I think it would be interesting to be an outlier in this new format where, where our points position is higher than maybe our average finish, you know, uh, where we kind of can leapfrog some guys because we use strategy midway through these races to collect, um, six or eight or 10 points at a time. Lynn? Got? Kelly Morrison, uh, the all-new NASCAR preview and press guide. Um, you've been racing since you were three years old. Um, what other dreams have you made come true for yourself? Um, well, I've got a beautiful family, and um, I'm a homeowner. That's cool. And uh, I, man, I just, I'm still racing for a living. I'm, I'm really proud of that. I'm really proud that I get to do that. And I'm, I'm proud that I get to be here. And, and honestly, I'm, I'm excited for the, the rest of my career and then whatever my second career may be, you know, whether it's selling used cars with my dad or, or, or playing a role in the NASCAR industry somehow. Um, you know, I, I, I feel like um, being a NASCAR driver is just, you're going to love this, stage one. <laughs> Last <My> question. Life. <laughs> uh, Daryl McFadden with NBC Sports. Um, I, j I just saw on a press release to today that you're, you're entering your eighth season in the Cup Series, and that kind of took me off guard. Yeah. D do you feel like I'm an eight-year ve veteran <laughs> of the, the top series in NASCAR? Um, I don't know. I think, I mean, I... Uh, I, I feel like I've been around a while. I mean, I've been driving cup cars for a long time. I, I, my first job in, in NASCAR was, was with Hendrick Motorsports, and, and I didn't, they didn't put me in an ARCA car. I didn't drive a k and car. I didn't drive anything like that. I drove a cup car at Greenville Pickens. It was Jeff Gordon's first COT car. Um, so I drove one of his COT cars before he ever drove one out of the 24 shop. 
And, uh, and that was my job the first couple of years in down here in North Carolina uh, when I moved from Iowa. So um, I've been driving these cars for a, for a long time. And, and, uh, and, and to kind of look, put that eight years in perspective in the Cup Series, you know, my, f my first... Uh, my first couple years, I was starting parking. I, I didn't run a lot of races. I was trying to qualify into races. I didn't really have a deal. You couldn't even say that I was signed to a team um, because I was just I was picking up jobs. Um, so I, I feel like I still feel pretty young in my career. I would say, um, even though I've been around for a while, I and I feel like that's a that's a tremendous asset, and I'm, that's one thing I think is very unique in my situation is that I've got a lot of experience, and, um, and, I'm, and I'm just kind of cresting that edge of, okay, we're, we're going to figure out how to win races. Because for the first few years of my cup career, it wasn't really how are we going to win races. It was how am I going to get myself onto the racetrack, um, and who am I going to be doing it with. Well, we appreciate you being on stage with us here, and uh, I know you've got other appointments. Yep. Got to keep things rolling. I think Ken's is up next. Yeah, uh, there's, there's movement back there. It's supposed to be for Matt, so we can get it. Tom Jensen way in the back. We'll get a microphone to you in a second. Tom. Hey, Matt. Tom Jensen, Fox Sports Talk. Hey, Tom. How are you? Matt Kenseth, Joe Gibbs Racing. Good to see you, bud. <laughs> How surprised were you when Carl Edwards announced he wasn't going to race this year? Carl's not racing this year? <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> I, was, um, I was as surprised as anybody else. I didn't know until uh, that Sunday night when Coach... Um, well, first of all, I knew it was bad news when it's been... This is my... Um, I guess it's my fifth year there, right? And it was the first time we ever had a conference call with all the drivers and crew chiefs. And it was on Sunday night after all the football games were over or whatever. And, um, and he told us about it then, and I guess the announcement was Wednesday or something. So that was, uh, that was the first time I heard about it, and I was uh, very, very surprised. The more I think about it, I'm probably not, not shocked. I mean, I think, um, I think kind of whatever Carl does, after I think about it for a while, it doesn't really totally, you know, totally surprise me. But I definitely didn't see it coming. Oh, you're going to have to get a microphone and announce your name and affiliation. <laughs> get get uh, Jenna a microphone, please. Uh, follow the rules, okay? Yeah, Jennifer, Associated <laughs> Press. Matt, I'm curious to know why, knowing Carl as well as you do, or for as long as you do, why it doesn't surprise you? Well, I mean, uh, you know, I don't really know anything more than you guys know. I actually didn't get to see the press conference because I was, I was, um, I was, I was working. I call it working. That's kind of fun, right? Driving race cars in circles in Vegas. Not really working, but I was testing, so I didn't really see it, and I didn't really hear all its reasons, so I don't really know any more than you guys know. Um, but I, I don't know. I mean, Carl's always been his own guy, right? He's always, um, he's always kind of just, I don't know, just thinking about him, his personality doesn't, after I think about it for a few days, doesn't totally shock me. You know what I mean? He's always been, you know, if he, you know, kind of does his own thing, you know, and if he decided that that's what he needed to do at the time. It doesn't shock me that he actually went through with it. Over here to the left, Jeff. Uh, Jeff Birchville, John City Press. Um, Matt, how do you, the pressures and stuff of race and the weekly grind like that, I mean, how is that for you? I mean, is that something that takes you a little while to decompress? Or, I mean, is that something that, you know, you just feel like it's... Uh, uh, Sorry about that. But... Uh, I mean, how do you handle those pressures? How do I handle the pressures of racing? Yeah, just the weekly grind of racing. Um, I mean, I'm fairly new at it, so I'm trying to um, kind of feel my way around it and figure out how to get through it. <laughs> nah, I don't know. I mean, I've raced pretty much, I mean, since I've been 16 years old, I've never really felt a lot of um, the pressure's never really been a lot different. Um, Whose annoying ringtone is that? I didn't even know they made that. Is that yours? It must not even go to voicemail. Oh, it's your watch. Oh, no wonder. Sorry, I didn't mean to call you out. What was your name so everybody can get on record? Um, I had way too much coffee this morning. Uh, I, I don't know. I've never felt that much pressure racing, no more or less than 
when I was racing my late mile to what I'm racing today. Although I feel like a little bit less pressure today since um, Carl hung it up because I feel like they kind of need drivers right now at the moment, so I feel like I'm a little more secure for the year. Um, but other than that, the pressure is all the same. You always want to perform. You want to you want to do your best. You're racing against all the best stock car racers anywhere, so you got to bring your A game every week and just try to try to prepare the same and work as hard as you can at it and um, try to get results. I think Bob has the mic next. Oh boy, Bob Hawkers, ESPN. Hold on, I got a phone call. Are you calling me? <laughs> <laughs> At least mine's on vibrate, though. Is it safe to assume that you haven't talked to Carl then? Is it safe to assume what? You should never assume. You know why? I, I know why. But I have talked to Carl several times. Uh, since the announcement? I have. So can, do you feel like you have a better understanding of why he's leaving than? I honestly know. I don't. Okay. Kenny. I, I really don't. You know, I kind of called and sort of asked him straight out. And um, when I hung up, it was um, probably less clear than before I picked it up. <laughs> I just don't, I really don't know. I mean, I think you guys at the press conference probably know more than me. I tried to listen to what he was saying. I tried to listen to what he wasn't saying, and I didn't really come up with anything. Kenny Bruce. But I don't think it was my fault at all. I think he liked working with me at the moment. I think it was, wasn't me. <laughs> Kenny Bruce Our, from com. I don't think so. Matt, I, I believe you have a new spotter for this year. Is is that a big deal or not a big deal? Or I do. <laughs> I'm learning so much in here. Uh, yeah. So um, with Carl's unexpected departure and um, and putting Daniel in there, you know, Crazy's worked with Daniel the whole time. You know, through the Xfinity series, Truck series, um, I have a hard time understanding Daniel. Most people have a hard time understanding me. Um, I guess the Wisconsin is just as hard. Um, so anyway, him and him and Crazy had that really good relationship, and then with Carl not being there and, and Jason being over there, um, I think everybody just kind of decided to make the swap, you know, for the good of kind of everybody for the company. And um, Crazy and Daniel work so well together, and um, Jason's always done a great job. He's only spotted for Carl, I think, his whole career, but he's uh, he does a great job as well. So um, you know, there's always some uh, you know pause I guess because you kind of learn each other and that and that takes a little bit to do that but um, I think it'll be fine. I think Brant's next. Brant James USA. Are you going to have more breaking news for me? Hmm. Well maybe you will so oh. let's work this out. How does going from three veterans sort of at the, the peak of their career to the three veterans and the new guy affect what the organization does trying to repeat that really successful across the board year you had last year? Well, I mean, that's hard to predict. You know, I've seen, um, you know, Eric obviously has a lot of uh, a lot of talent and has done really well from the first time to put him in a car. Um, Daniel, I've really enjoyed um, getting to know him a little bit, but really watching his progression from the first time he got in a truck and Xfinity car to, to where he ended the season last year. Um, he's a really hard worker. He asks a lot of questions. He always, you know, wants advice, wants help, um, puts a lot of time into it. And like I say, from watching him from when he started to to that incredible race he drove, um, not just at Homestead, more than that, but at Homestead to be able to to win that championship, I mean, was was amazing. So um, you never know what's too soon, or or um, I don't know if there's ever too late, but what's too soon to put somebody in a car? It's hard to say, um, but I think both those guys, you know, have have the talent. Um, it just depends how fast you can get everything, you know, rolling around them. So uh, I feel like. Um, you know, Kyle, Denny, and I, this will be our fifth year together. I feel like our communication is really good. Uh, three of us understand each other pretty well and our tendencies and, um, you know, how we communicate different things. And uh, for those two to be able to jump in there, I think that will be a big help for them. And at the same time, I think we'll, we'll learn things from those guys as well. I mean, I think you, it's always fun to see somebody's fresh perspective on things that, that, that maybe you don't have or maybe get stuck in your way. So I, I think it will be fine. I think it will be good. Um, and hopefully they come out of the bat, you know, running good, but just not as good as me. Lee Spencer uh, should be uh, close to the last question. Lee Spencer, Motorsport.com. Did you, Mike Heldon, have a friendly bet on Sunday's game that you all attended? We did not have a bet. Um, actually, I, I believe that would be illegal. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, I think it's illegal, isn't it? <laughs> it's not? Oh. No, we did not bet on game. What's that? For the Super Bowl, I think uh, it's going to be the Patriots and the Falcons. 
Good choice. Last last question over here. <laughs> oh, you mean who's going to win it? I thought you meant who's going to make the Super Bowl. I don't know. I think it, you know Atlanta's best offense in the league, highest scoring offense. But man, it's hard to bet against the Patriots and Belichick and Brady. They've been there so many times and have the experience, know what to expect. Um, you know they're not going to get the big game jitters and all that kind of stuff. So you just don't know. But Atlanta's Atlanta's pretty explosive. They're pretty good as well. Final question. Keith McFarland. I think it's going to be a tie. Keith McFarland, the Keith McFarland review. Uh, one question for you. Um, what areas of improvement? I got a question. What area are you sitting in? I'm over here. Ah, there we go. All right. <laughs> what areas of improvement would you like to see for yourself in the upcoming season? And for the second part of that, um, from the veterans or even the uh, maybe younger racers, uh, are there any techniques that you yourself have seen that you'd like to uh, kind of recalibrate into your um, way of racing? Yeah, I mean, for me, I guess I don't have any, you know, particular goals like you want to, you know, besides wanting to win and obviously get down to the four at Homestead and try to win a championship. I mean, it's your goal every year. But um, to just improve and get better, you know, you, you uh, no matter how long you do this, there's always room for improvement. Um, you always get done with a season and you look back or not even a season, a week or a weekend or a day of practice or whatever. You always look back and, and um, you know, try to see things that you didn't do very well and that you certainly are capable of doing better. So for me, just to keep, keep improving, um, you know, put all your effort into it, study as hard as you can, you know, just try to be the very best you can be every weekend. So that's probably my goal. Um, for the new guys, you know, it's such a different world than when I came in. And I think the main thing that's changed that is, is technology. You know, when, when I first stepped into the sport and I had teammates, um, great teammates, I had Mark Martin and Jeff Burton, and I fed off those guys. Um, but there's only so much you could get off them. You know, you could talk about things, and, and I think they'd level with you and tell you things, and you'd learn. But it's not the same as today when you have all the – EFI data to look at, you know, you can go, you know, Eric or Daniel, whoever can go study, you know, Kyle Denny's nice data from years, years of archives, you know, they can look at every lap you raced if they want, look at your throttle and your brake and your steering and how you do things and, and all that. So that's changed things a lot. That's also leveled the playing field a lot, by the way, and gets everybody closer to the same speed and, and all that because um, it's harder to keep any anything yourself if you have something that you're doing that's really working for you at a certain track or a certain day or whatever it's um much easier for somebody else to find that so i think uh, getting those guys over there and getting to the racetrack and kind of looking over how they do things and and vice versa and working together i think i think that'll be fun and i, I really do think we'll all help each other appreciate you spending some time with us matt yeah, no problem thanks for having me thank you matt. yo Xfinity double zero. Cole Custer. How are you? First question for Cole. How about Hill Overton? Yes, with WIXC Radio. Cole, uh, this is your first year at the cup level. What would be your expectations and what would you consider to be a successful year? Uh, well, actually, I'm running the Xfinity series this year, but uh, you're, you're good. <laughs> uh, but. Uh, I think it's definitely going to be a different, you know, coming from the truck series, it's, there's a lot of cup guys that you're racing against, and there's a, it's just a new competition level, so you just really have to step up a little bit, and it's going to be a little bit of a different challenge, but I think, uh, I think we can do it, and we have a great team. I think Stan back there has the uh, next question. Kansas was working them over, so they're, they're ready for you. Here we go. No, I had to take a breath. Um, <laughs> Stan Creekmore with Outside the Box. Cole, you went through everything that the truck series had to do with caution flags and everything like that to, to try to even stuff. As, as your first year in Xfinity, you're going to have all these new rules as well about segments and everything like that. Have you thought about that, and, and, and how do you think it will affect your racing? Uh, we'll see. I think there's... We're still kind of trying to figure out if it's going to affect your strategy or not, but uh, you're definitely going to be trying to race hard for those bonus points and everything. So it's going to be, uh, I think that's going to be interesting. There's going to be a lot more to talk about during the race, and I think uh, it's going to be a good thing for the sport. Darren. Uh, Dale McFadden with uh, NBC Sports. What, 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 what are some obstacles or struggles that 
uh, your team has faced in basically creating an Xfinity team from scratch uh, during this offseason? And w w what kind of advice have you gotten from, like, Tony Stewart in going into this first, first full season? Uh, well, it's definitely been tough. I mean, our guys are working extremely hard right now, getting cars together, and uh, I can't even stress that enough how hard they're working. And uh, I mean, it's definitely tough. You know, you're you're creating them a fab shop, and you know, you've never really hung Xfinity up bodies before, so you're learning how to do that, and you're you're just you're figuring out everything to, that goes with it. So it's not easy, but uh, we have some awesome people that I think are really smart and can get it together. So I think uh, we're going to be up, have a strong team and. There's definitely, I mean, I've, I have some great teammates that give me a lot of advice going into the season. I'm trying to, you know, try and get as much information I can from Harvick going into these different Xfinity races because he's obviously one of the best in, in the Xfinity series. And, uh, you know, I just can't wait for the season to start. I think Chris or Lee has one there. I think, Chris, you had your hand up first. Chris Knight, CatchMess.com. How was your birthday? It was pretty good. It was uh Definitely had some stuff going on, uh, but it was a uh, it was a good time. We got some dinner at the end of the day, so it was a uh, pretty la pretty relaxed and uh, nothing too big happened though. Do you think that you guys can come out and be championship material right off the bat, being a new team and new manufacturer and all? I think so. We have some great people that are smart enough and capable enough of doing it, and uh, I think at the start of the year, you know, my start expectations a little bit lower, like maybe trying to be in the top ten by just being solidly in there at the start of the year. But obviously, I think from what I've seen over the off season, we have some awesome people that are going to make some fast cars. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to it, and I think uh, we'll have a shot at it. Lee? Lee Spencer, Motorsport.com. How much time have you spent with Jabo, and what do you think you can um, pull in from him? Uh, I usually probably see him once a day, usually. I usually try and stay around the shop a little bit and trying to – going there every day but uh he's one of the most level head people i've ever met and he's seems like he has his act together and is really smart so i think uh i think we're gonna be a great team and i think uh we'll, we'll have some good good season coming up over here to the left zach zach albert nascar.com uh cole just how much did you learn from the handful of xfinity starts you made last year and and just how big of a jump uh can you describe it being uh, it's definitely tough. I mean, racing against the cup guys and racing uh, against some of the guys that have been doing it for a few years now. But uh, it, it's definitely something that's hard to get used to. And, you know, you have some longer races, some more time. Well, actually, it's going to change now with the segments. But, I mean, uh, it's, uh, it's definitely a, it's a different speed of a race. And I think it's, uh, it's interesting, though, and you're, just, you're learning every day. You've got all those voices that you can turn to and you have and you've kind of grown up there at the shop. Which one seems to be the most in sync with how you drive that seems to when that voice speaks it fits what you're driving and, and what is that? Uh, I would say, I mean, I've, I've tried to just get most of my uh, advice from Kevin Harvick. I mean, he's just, I feel like I've related to him more since he runs a lot of the, the truck races and the Xfinity races so he, he can really help me a lot with that and uh, it seems like he's kind of my my go-to guy, I would say, right now. But obviously, we have some. It's a good one. There's a lot of great drivers at Stuart Haas, so if if I could just get a little bit of information from any of them, I think it would be a great great thing. Excellent. Next question. Uh, Lewis Frank Reuters. Uh, <clears throat> obviously, the big news last year was Stuart Haas switching from GM to Ford. Any advantages or disadvantages that you may not be familiar with with a Ford chassis or before? Uh, no, I mean everything that I've seen with with Ford is has been awesome. I mean they have some really great resources at their Ford Performance Center, and uh, they have some great people. I think it's going to help us a lot. And uh, you got to thank GM for everything that they did for Stuart Haas. They've been with them forever, but I think uh, this change is, you know, it's going to be a a step. A good, good step for Stuart Haas. Stuart Haas starts the uh, Xfinity project with you. They've, they've never been there. You've not been, you know, really there full time. What's the end of the year? What, what makes success this year for you and the team? What, what's your position that will say it was success? Uh, I definitely want to make the chase. I think that's one of the one of our goals starting out and then hopefully I mean we'll take it one step at a time I would say and uh, hopefully we can advance through it and 
we'll see what, what happens from there. Got some more questions for Cole. Well, they have given you uh, quite a lot to, uh, for them to write about, and we appreciate your time. It's, um, it's always good to see uh, somebody coming up from uh, grassroots quarter midget racing and uh, through the uh, USACs and now all the way on up. It'll be exciting to watch you do what you do. Cool. Thank you. I appreciate it. Cole Custer. So that will end this.